Hi, I'm Joni Patree, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I'm going to talk about the month of July. We have so many events and changes happening in July. Just to give you an idea of what I'm going to be talking about, we have the Venus retrograde, which always has to do with relationships and the possibility of your old flame or something about an old relationship returning into your life this month. Furthermore, I have so much to talk about the patterns in the cycles of the planets this month. We have some amazing formations that are going to bring incredible karmic retributions and justice and truth that will prevail and change our views of how we see our lives and our society and world. So before I get going with all of that, I want to remind everyone of all the opportunities I have that I'm going to be offering. Well, first of all, sign up for my free newsletter on my website because with this free newsletter, you're going to get all the dates that I'm talking about. So you don't have to be writing them down frantically. You'll get them all delivered to your email address. Go to galacticcenter.org and you're going to find all the great things that I'm offering, such as if you missed my Dallas conference, Future of Astrology, it is all recorded now. Every single lecture, you can sit at home and enjoy the conference. So on galacticcenter.org, you're going to find that you can buy the conference. You can get my free newsletter. You can sign up for our spiritual group of shooting stars. Plus, don't forget my magazine, Joni Patrice Astrology Insight monthly so many fabulous articles you will love it so go to galacticcenter.org and don't forget if this spurred you on to wanting to learn how to be an astrologer make predictions my university of vedic astrology starts a new semester one this is July 26th. Don't miss it. Go to University of Vedic Astrology. Dot com. So with that, let's get going with all these remarkable changes that are about to occur the month of July. So get ready because this is an incredible month. So the first thing that I want to talk about is July 1st. We have where Mars is going to enter Leo and soon following on July 6th, Venus will enter Leo. And while these two planets are traveling in Leo, remember that Mars and Venus are the dispositing planets of Rahu and Aries and Ketu and Libra. So Mars ruling Aries and Venus ruling Libra. They are sitting in Leo this month. And this brings so many changes with what? Leadership, rulership, presidents. You're going to find a radical shift in change in rulership all around the world. And another thing is that Mars around July 6th will be Gandanta. What does that mean? Well, when it's in the last degrees of a water sign, but the first degrees of a fire sign, this represents big emotion, major events. And another thing, this will have a lot to do with pretty much storms, severe weather. There is a lot of that going on. So hurricane season is going to start up with a big bang starting in the month of July. Also Gandanta planets, Mars will be Gandanta, Venus will be Gandanta. They, they're pretty much when things are out of control. Emotionally, people are on a rampage this month. They can't control their feelings and their emotions because Mars and Venus will be in Cancer and go into Leo. Those are the areas where things get really heated up and troublesome. So looking at around July 1st, Mars going into Leo, 
also on that day, Mercury is going to be conjunct the sun around 15 degrees of Gemini. And this means, well, really in the cycle of Mercury, when Mercury is conjunct the sun, this is actually called the superior conjunction because it's on the other side of the sun from Earth. When it's in the inferior conjunction, it's on the inside where there's Earth, Mercury, and the sun. And that's when Mercury's retrograde. But right now, since it's on the opposite side of the sun, this is its superior conjunction, which means Mercury is going at tip top speed faster than usual. As a matter of fact, it will only be in Gemini between June 24th and July 8th. And that's only two weeks or just about two weeks. And this is the best time to get things done. Mercury and Gemini will give you clarity of thought. It's a great time to set up meetings. There's clear vision, focus, transparency. Use this time for meetings, maybe even some travel, even though I do see storms starting to brew, but get things done. Really, the end of June and the first week of July is the best time to get things done because Mercury's at tip-top speed and it's in its sign of rulership, Gemini, which deals with communications, clarity, seeing things with a vision. So from July 8th to July 24th, Mercury will be in Cancer, and that's a bit more sensitive. There's more feeling, more emotion. This is not necessarily how we want things to go um, when you're making plans, when it's in Cancer. But it's still moving at tip top speed. But while it's in Cancer, then we get all this confusion emotionally. And what's going to be happening is there's going to be more of a need and a call for protection because we've got Mercury in Cancer. And Mercury will be Gandanta too when it leaves Cancer towards the end of July and it goes into Leo as well. But get things done before this time. So the full moon is going to be July 3rd. And this is going to be in Sagittarius, which also is in the Nakshra, Nakshatra, Purva Ashada, which this Nakshatra actually means a search for the truth. And you're going to find that there's going to be so much going on in terms of bringing people to clarity, to truthfulness, but people are searching to find answers during the time of this full moon. And there is there has been so much deception. There has been long-standing denials and finally the opportunities to reveal the hidden truths will come about during this full moon. Remember a full moon is where the moon illuminates the darkness of the night sky. Therefore, it brings awareness. And one thing is also during this time, during this full moon, we also have the sun and Mercury, of course, in Gemini. But remember while they're in Gemini, they're in the nakshatra, I'm talking about Mercury in the sun, Ardra. And Ardra is considered the storm god. Because Rudra, the storm god, is the howling winds. So there will be severity in weather. Like I said before, you're going to see hurricane season and things really come to a peak with severity. The weather will be extreme and so will emotions, emotional turmoil, because the symbol for the Nakshatra Ardra is a teardrop. And yes, that represents storms, but emotional storms. People will be out of control and there will be a sense of sadness going on. Another thing that I see because Venus and Mars will be in Leo. You're going to find leadership not only change, some in power around the world will step down or their 
lead will end. Or you might find that some old presidents or leaders, there will be a passing of them that maybe, maybe are in or may not, are not in rulership at the time. So you're going to see a real changing of the guard and there's going to be some sadness around it. So following the full moon, um, July 6th, Mars will aspect Neptune. Now this is, this is where things get really dicey because what is Neptune? Neptune deals with scandals and it deals with deception. And then around July 9th, Mars will then start to aspect Pluto. So you see what we're forming is where Mars is the focal point of a yod between Neptune and Pluto. And Mars as the trigger is very serious because Mars represents anger, violence, breakouts, war, things where people are very aggressive. And remember Neptune the planet of deception, deceit, denial, and scandals is in a sextile aspect with Pluto, which is power, which is transformational power. So there's going to be a big breakout of cover-ups. And yes, I am talking about cover-ups that could be about aliens, extraterrestrials from beyond, there's going to be breakouts of information. I mean, the can of worms is about to open and so many things are being revealed at this time. I can tell you the yod, remember a yod is when you have one planet that forms a quincunx to one planet and another planet. So one planet is forming a quincunx to two planets. And it actually, if you look at the chart, creates a Y, one of the reasons why it's called a Yod. But what is a Yod? But it's called the finger of God. And what that equates to, or what that indicates is that there are events of a fateful nature that need to happen to clear the air, to finally bring resolution, retribution to all the things that have been building and growing. And now there's this frustrating aspect that makes it all break open. And then we have a lot to deal with because what are we going to do once we have all this information when the cat's out of the bag? This is going to bring major transformation, major change, because we are lifting the veil of the illusion and now we're going to see the truth. So this, this month, the odds being formed are about anger, disruption, power, illusion, scandals. And I want you to know also, there's another planet that comes into play because Mars is going to be opposing Saturn. At the same time, it is forming a yod to Neptune and Pluto. I know this is a lot of astrological lingo, but let me explain something here. The configurations in the sky are extraordinary and rare. Therefore, the events that are happening are not everyday events. These are huge events that are changing our world. It will never be the same after this month and especially next month. So everything's happening now. But I want to warn everyone to get healthy now because August and September, there's going to be heaviness that we cannot 
avoid. And you have to get healthy now, not wait till it happens. So watch your diet, take your vitamins, get your immune system strong, and most of all, emotionally and spiritually, you have to make yourself strong to be able to get through these times well. It's going to be an amazing time to be alive. And yes, things are going to get better. But now that all this is being uncovered, it's not going to be easy. As I always say, it's like a birth. birth birthing process is very painful. But once it's done, there's a new beginning. So now is the time of going through that canal of pain to get to the other side of glory. So get ready. This is the time of great events. Let me put it that way. So when I'm talking about this yod, there's actually when Mars is opposing Saturn, Saturn becomes the reaction point to the focal point of Mars because it sits at the midpoint between Pluto and Neptune. This is a rare event. What is Saturn? Saturn deals with our karma. Saturn deals with reality. And what that is, is the reality of the karma of nations and worlds and individual. The time is up. Now it's time to pay for the retribution and the changes. It's pay up time. There's no escaping this anymore. So these scandals are going to be amazing. So the planet of karma is going to make people pay up their dues coming up here really soon. So it is a time of spiritual evolution and wake up period where people become awake and conscious, but only after great conflict. And this is, a, as I'm saying repeatedly, this is a truly huge event because the massive cover-ups are out. Truth and reality are being revealed. And whether you believe it or not, it's out there. So let's talk about the new moon that happens on June 17th. It, this will be zero degrees of cancer in the nakshatra Purnavasu which means return of the light. And I love that nakshatra because it's going to give us hope back that all of this is happening for a divine reason. And this reason, we, we have to admit everything happens for a reason and it must happen. And the consequences, by the way, of all of this uncovering of corruption of money, governments, whatever they've been hiding, it's going to play huge effects out on the economy. So you're going to see some major, major cycles downward. Even though the stock market stays so volatile, but let me tell you, this information is going to change the economy big time. There are consequences in the financial world. So right after the new moon, that happens on the 17th, July 20th is important because this is going to be when Mars and Saturn exactly oppose. And this always deals with some kind of backlash, some kind of setback, problems, obstacles that must be overcome. And as Mars sits in Leo in the Nakshatra Maga, which represents kings and leaders. There's major setbacks. Once again, this is concerning leaders. And I also noticed another configuration going on, which there's going to be a grand cross, cardinal cross, which is hellacious because Rahu is in Aries while K2 is in Libra, but the sun is in Cancer and Pluto's in Capricorn. So this is the karmic payback in terms of 
where the present leaders, things will have to change. There's a big transition. So July 22nd, this is so important. This is the big finale this month. Venus turns retrograde. I did, I did a video already explaining all the details about Venus retrograde, but let me give you a little recap of what it's all about. So Venus turns retrograde July 22nd, and it will retain, remain retrograde till September 3rd. And when it turns retrograde, it will be at four degrees of Leo. And this will bring out all issues concerning what? Love, marriage, and relationships. That's what Venus rules, love and relationships. So many times, well, what, let me just say what, when a planet goes retrograde, it pretty much brings up that which we have ignored and we have to go back, review and revisit and learn. So we're here to learn about relationships at this time. And so therefore when Venus goes retrograde, it will bring back old issues of relationships. Sometimes it actually brings back someone from our past because unresolved issues around relationships are what you're here to heal at this time. So you might find whether or not somebody from your past comes back, it could even mean just the memory or even in a current relationship, you'll realize you're repeating the same old issue that you've come here to learn about relationships. Now, the fact that Venus even sits in the sign of Leo is so important because Leo is the sign of the heart energy, the open hearted energy. And what's fascinating about this is that it will even be for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, it will be in the nakshatra Purva Falguni. This nakshatra, Purva and Uttara Falguni are called the marriage nakshatras. And that's what this is going to pertain to, our commitment to relationships. So you're here to look at what actually went wrong in previous relationships so that you can heal it to have healthy current relationships to heal our relationships from looking at what we how we messed up in the past to heal it for future so this this will deal with your unresolved issues in love and sometimes like i said before partners do reappear you do reconnect but many times you're there just to learn where it went wrong so does it usually work out? But what is a relationship? A relationship is simply a reflection of issues of ourselves. Relationships teach us how to love. And let me just say this, if you don't have respect or love for yourself, how do you expect others to love you? You are going to have major issues in relationships when you don't love and respect and honor yourself. So this is a big lesson in self-love, healing issues from the past. And once you come from a place where you do know how to love, and that means having respect and love for yourself, then you heal current relationships because they're always a reflection in some way. So this will heal many issues around relationships at this time. Be aware and be open. Venus has such an interesting cycle. I love the whole aspect of how Venus works because in its entire process of its retrograde cycles, it takes eight years with five retrograde phases that Venus forms a pentagram, which is a five sided star, extremely spiritual, 
symbol. And here's the, here's the message I want to give about this. So since Venus, it returns every eight years to the exact place it was before. Same time of year, same degrees and signs that it was this July and August as it was eight years ago, July and August in the year of 2015. I want you to go back and look what happened July and August of 2015 because from there you're going to better understand what you're here to learn in this Venus retrograde. And I went back to 2015 and thought what was going on in the global front in the world. And the most important thing that I think is relative to today was in 2015 Donald Trump announced his bid for the presidency. Now, my indication here is that at this time, July and August, there will probably be someone of importance that will announce their bid for the presidency, just like what happened in 2015. And this is going to change the whole makeup of what we're looking at in terms of the run for the presidency for 2024. Watch what happens. There's going to be a big shakeup. So about two weeks after Venus turns retrograde, in its cycle, it goes from an evening star, where we can see it at night, to a morning star. But in about a week or so, in between being an evening star and becoming a morning star, it disappears. Why? Because it aligns with the sun, we can't see it. But in that disappearing time period, well, the ancients, particularly the Mayans, put great reference to that time. It was like Venus disappears and reappears. And actually, this happens about every 18 months. So the ancients, the Mayans, pretty much said when Venus goes from an evening star to a morning star, it becomes more violent. And they actually predicted war and hostility. But I think this will predict more hostility and events because of what's being uncovered it's being uncovered. All the cover-ups that are coming out are increasing the anger because what the end result is in August and September, that's when we have the events because there's more yods coming, especially in September. August, but September, there are some yods that are going to be forming in the sign of Virgo, health and disease, that I want you to prepare now for. Make yourself healthy. There could be another health crisis. And if it's not that, it's something else that's going to create mass fear in our society. So you have to get healthy now. But yes, this Venus is a huge symbol because Venus is going back and forth. And I want to say that this re represents an enormous time of change. So Venus will be in Leo from July 7th through August 7th, and then it will retrograde back into Cancer will, where it will remain till, till October 1st. And Venus will go through the sign of Leo from October 1st and November 2nd for the second time. When this happens, from October 1st to November 2nd, there will be a great healing that you will discover in relationships, love, or marriage. This is so important because remember, Leo is the nakshatra, is, has the nakshatra Purva Falguni, the marriage nakshatra, that is so important in relationships. So looking at this, when Venus is in Cancer, this will affect global affairs that concern safety 
and protection. So apparently there is some mass undercurrents that can deal with fear around war and peace. There is so much brewing, brewing under the surface. We've got to be aware. And this is going to be where people are going to start becoming more and more fearful. So around July 23rd, remember these dates are important. Rahu will be aspecting Venus by its full aspect. And around the same time, Venus will be in a quincunx. This is that 8-6 relationship that deals with death and problems and difficulty. And so what does this really mean? Venus with Pluto at this time, while Rahu is aspecting Venus, deals with major issues of betrayal. So this can deal with actually issues with countries, but evidently, most obviously, personally be aware this is where the issues are to be healed around love this will deal with betrayal issues so by july 29th july 29th venus remember is still retrograde then it will form a quincunx that difficult aspect eight six relationship with neptune and Neptune deals with deception, deceit, denial, scandals. So Venus, in other words, comes into that position where Mars was, forming a yod. And Venus dealing with love and relationships and peace deals with great betrayals at this time. This is a very difficult time. That's why I say you have to heal your issues around marriage, love, and relationships. But this also goes into the area of war and peace. Mars forms, forms a yod, which is warlike. Venus forms a yod, which means there is a need for peace and action towards this. So let me just say, this is not a time to isolate. It is a time to come together, to find friendship, to find community, to find where we feel a sense of uniting with others so we don't feel alone. This will definitely increase your sense of security through connection with others. And remember, most of all, this month is about healing past relationships. Because when you do so, you'll heal your opportunities for the future happiness in love, marriage, and relationships. This will create and give you caring and healing relationships. The truth being uncovered in all areas concerning worldly views and personal relationships is going to heal your life and your world. This is a time to heal yourself, to make yourself healthy for the betterment of you and everyone else around you. As you do this, the rewards are great. You will find that during this time, through self-improvement, through finding love and attraction and finding peace, Working on yourself, this will bring so much personal fulfillment and will definitely equate to personal happiness. And most of all, this will increase your quest for living because this is the time that so many things are on the edge and will create massive, beautiful, transformational changes. And I have to say, this is a very exciting time to be alive on planet Earth. So with that, I think I'll close. If you would like more information on me, if you would like a reading, if you would like my, my free newsletter, want to watch the whole Future of Astrology conference, get my magazine. It's all on my website. 
which is galacticcenter.org. And don't forget, if you would love to join our astrological community, University of Vedic Astrology, go to my website. We have a new class starting July 26, and that is University of Vedic Astrology. Dot com. Thank you.